shine down on me. Hello friends, I'm Chad Coffin, welcoming you to the River Church Telecast with Pastor Dale Berry. I'll be back at the end of this broadcast to bring you more information on the River Church. And now, here is Pastor Dale Berry. There's a number of kinds of faith now, okay? Everyone saved and unsaved alike has natural human faith in the above uh, scripture. However, it's talking about a supernatural faith, a faith that, believers with, uh, that believes with the heart rather than believing with our physical senses may tell us. Because people do believe with their natural faith, natural senses. Our text describes faith as the evidence of things not seen. Um, faith says, I have it now. Faith is giving substance to things hoped for now. Let me break down just a little bit. Head faith and heart faith are natural faith and supernatural faith that we just talked about. John Wesley said one time that the devil has given the church a substitute for faith. Say substitute. <laughs> now, now check this out real closely and make sure you haven't adopted a substitute for real supernatural faith, real Bible faith. And if you have, make an adjustment. Amen. One that looks and sounds so much like faith that few people can tell the difference. He called this substitute mental assent. Say mental assent. Many people read God's word and agree that it is true, but they are agreeing only with their minds. And that is not what gets the job done. It is heart faith that receives from God. Now we're going to do our best to clarify that. And if, I don't, if, if something's confusing to you and you don't get it, we've not done any good. So at the end, if you're unsure about something, you need to ask questions. Okay? Because we don't need to dis disregard this. Mark 11 now. Mark 11, 23 and 24. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now it's going to look like a really fine line between head faith and heart faith as I show you how to release your faith, okay? So just really try to grasp it and pay close attention to it. How can we tell whether we have heart faith or are just mentally agreeing? Mental assent says, I know God's word is true. I know God has promised healing, but for some reason I can't get it. I can't understand it. However, real faith is God's word saying, if God's word says it's so, then it's so. It is mine. I have it now. I have it though I can't see it. So the fine line is, uh, Real Bible faith is substance and it is evidence. And the force of faith is an assurance. Another word for substance is assurance. Now faith is confidence. It's substance. It's assurance. It's the title deed. It's all these different words. That one word, substance, could be changed out to these other words. They'd really be accurate, used as synonyms in this verse even though they went not in the English language, really, but in this verse, they do all mean these different things. That one word does, substance. It means assurance, title deed. So the moment you've got assurance, then you've got the substance. The moment inside you you're confident that it's yours is the moment you've got the substance. The moment inside you feel like you own the title deed to the vehicle, so to speak, spiritually, is the moment that you have the evidence. It's yours. It's yours. Now, some people have to really work hard to get to the place where they feel that way. Other people have made a quality decision that the Bible's true. See what I'm saying? You see the shortcut to just it always being right? In other words, and you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to have some better words for it uh, that came from my notes. <clears throat> uh, you're going to see that if you made the quality decision, the moment you find the promise is the moment you've decided, I, I'm going to pray for that situation. I'm going to use that promise. I'm going to bind the devil off my stuff. Brother Hagin always said, use these three steps. He said, find scripture that promises you the situation. Bind the devil off of what you're doing. And loose ministering spirits to go get it and work in your behalf. Because angels hearken to the voice of the word. The moment you read the scripture and pray 
with that scripture and believe God for that situation is the moment angels started working. So you're loosening them into the arena of what you need done. So he said this on, Brother Hayden was rarely ever on TV, but he was on TBN one night, and he taught this, and people couldn't believe it was this simple. You mean it's that easy to, to believe God for something and, get, and see God move? He said, absolutely, every time, every time. Amen. So there's the decision to live by faith, and that's to just deciding to live by faith. Then there's the force of faith. So uh, the force of faith is the confidence, the assurance, the title deed, that's the force. That's the spiritual force of faith. But the decision activates the force whether I feel like it or not. The decision to live by faith and, and pull out the promise and bind the devil off of that prayer that I pray over that verse in that situation and loose ministering spirits. The job for me after that is to simply obey any promptings the Holy Ghost gives me and keep my mouth in line with what I prayed and what the Word says. You can't expect it to work if you just threw it out there in hope. You're still in hope. And if you threw it out there and started uh, uh, doubting and voicing your doubts, then now you've moved into unbelief. And you're not in faith anymore, you see. These are the reasons why people don't get manifestations of what they really want to see happen. These are the reasons. If you'll just, just treat it like it's a garden, you plant a garden, you won't go out there and dig up your seed the next day unless you don't want to harvest, right? You plant a garden, and you stick with what you planted, right? You treat it right, you, you water it, you, you make sure it's cared for, pull the weeds out of it, amen? What could be a weed in my faith situation? Anything the devil tries to throw in there that don't fit in faith could be a weed. Ditch it, get rid of it, amen? Don't come off God's word. Now, everybody don't understand your faith language. So, a word to the wise should be sufficient. A word to the wise would be, Talk about this stuff with people that understand where you're coming from. You know what I'm saying? If you want to teach somebody faith, teach them. But they might not understand your language. That's Because you've got to realize most of the people you talk to are at best operating in natural human faith. At best, they're operating sense knowledge. At best. And so when you say, I believe I receive it in Jesus' name, it's mine, I have it now, they're going to say, show it to me. Right? But that's not the language of faith, and that's not the operation of faith. That's natural faith. Natural human faith sees it and believes it. Supernatural faith believes it and then sees it. It's opposite. And I know it don't compute with this little thing up here, but we're not trying to get this up here working for you. We already know how it works. We're trying to get something that supersedes this down here working. It causes you to operate in the supernatural. Amen? Pretty good stuff, huh? Amen. <clears throat> I've heard people say, but the thing I have been praying about hasn't come to pass yet. If you already had it, you wouldn't have to believe it. For then, you would know it. You see what I'm saying? If you already got, got it, you're not questioning. You know it's yours and it's forced to manifest. The force of faith went out there to get it. And it's forced to manifest itself. Just keep your mouth in line. Don't doubt uh, in your heart. You know, Brother Hayden used to say, you know, you can doubt in your head without doubting in your heart. Thoughts may come by your head. That don't mean you quit believing. First time a thought comes in your head and says, ah, you know that stuff don't work. That don't mean you're not believing. Brother Hagin used to say, you know, you can't stop the birds from flying overhead, but you can keep them from building the nest. You know what I mean? You start clearing out the stuff they're trying to build the nest with. Clear out all the fall. Cast down imaginations. Every high thing exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring into captivity every thought. How you bring captivity? How you bring thoughts captive in this area? You make all your thoughts line back up with what you believed for in the beginning. Make them all line up with the Word. Remind the devil what the Word says. The thoughts. Cast those thoughts down. Bring those thoughts captive. How you do that, Pastor Dale? you got to put the right thought in. It's a bigger thought. It's a bigger thought. Amen? God's thoughts are higher. His ways are higher, aren't they? Aren't His thoughts higher? Look at Isaiah. You'll see they are. I think it's Isaiah 55. Don't turn there. I'm just saying. Okay, let's see. Where am I at? Here we go. You have to take the step of believing 
in order to come to the place of knowing. Now again, the force of faith is knowing. The force of faith knows. Okay? And now faith is. But you've made a decision to live by faith and you take the step of believing in order to come to the place of knowing. So there's kind of a, it sounds like a conflict in terminology and, and a conflict in terms, but really what's happening here is I've made a decision that I'm a faith person. I've made a decision I buy into Scripture every time. So the moment I find the promise of Scripture, then I'm moving into the, I'm taking the step right here. I'm taking the step of believing in order to come to the place of knowing. So the first time you decide to believe for something, you may not be releasing a full force of faith. Does that make sense? The full force is when you know it. How many of you always, you don't always know it? Is this, I hope this ain't confusing you. Because when you teach faith, people will not understand. It's either faith or it ain't. Which is it? Well, the just shall live by faith. But the just don't automatically have the force of faith when they made a decision. Does that, does that make more sense when I say it that way? So you've decided what? The just shall live by faith. To four places in the Bible. Two or three of them is in the New Testament. I can't remember which. Uh, <clears throat> but it's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It simply says specifically the same phrase exactly. The just shall live by faith. One might say the just shall live by his faith. So the just shall live by faith. And that means you have to choose the lifestyle of faith. That's how you got justified and that's how you're going to get everything else. But that does not mean that you're in now faith every time on the full degree of releasing the force of faith. But it does mean this. If you agree with God, there's a measure of that force always delivered when you deliver it. You see my point? So it's either you came in knowing without a shadow of a doubt, with evidence, with substance, with assurance and confidence, or you chose those paths immediately. Evidence, substance. And you found God's word on it and you refused to move off of it. It's the same faith. The moment you do that and you pray and release that, it's the force of faith. It just doesn't start out until you release it. See what I'm saying? I don't know that I'm doing a great job of trying to make this simple, but I, I was trying to simplify it the way I understand it because I'm convinced a lot of people, when you just teach basics of faith, they don't get it. You know? The moment I go to the promise and release that faith, I've agreed with God. And that substance is just as much mine is if I'm in the full force of knowing in advance, as long as I leave it intact and don't take it out of the ground. Make sense? I hope it does. Many people simply don't understand this. Many people want to know it from the standpoint of it's coming to pass and then believe it. That's natural faith. We must believe it because God's Word says it's ours. Then it materializes. Amen? Let me say that again. Many people want to know it from the standpoint of it's coming to pass and then believe it after it comes to pass. We must believe it because God's word says it is ours, then it materializes. I love the way that says that. Then it materializes. Well, that don't sound like faith. Well, it is. The moment it's substance in your spirit, man, the moment it's substance in your spirit, man, it's yours. Amen? Amen? And it's your substance the moment you choose to believe it because God's Word says it. It's that simple. It's that simple. I find that I, I, I find that I release faith a lot more based on just finding the promise than I do wait until I get to such a place of confidence and assurance that I couldn't doubt. I go the path of faith and refuse doubt, and then it's mine. It's still mine. It has to materialize. Doesn't have a choice but to materialize, you know? Doesn't have a choice. Notice from Mark eleven twenty four 24 that the receiving comes after the believing. Do you hear that? The receiving comes after the believing. Natural faith, the, the, the receiving comes first and then the believing because I see it, so I believe it. But with supernatural faith, the receiving comes uh, after the believing. What things soever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. You see what I'm saying? It will materialize 
if you believe you receive when you pray. Well, how can I be in a place of believing? I just got through telling you the process. You might not have a shadow of a doubt when you start, but you've chosen a believing path so you can say no to doubt. You see what I'm saying? And the doubt in your heart and doubt in your head are two different things. Just because you doubt it, a doubt came in your brain does not mean you're in doubt in your heart. When you've made quality decisions to live a life of faith, you're not usually doubting at all if you stay on the path. There's no room for doubt because you believe you receive when you pray. So you had not left any room for any doubt. Amen? Jesus was simply saying, you've got to believe you have it before you can receive it. You've got to believe you have it before you can receive it. Well, that's the same thing as being, having assurance. Amen? I've got assurance and confidence, title deed, substance, but it's still not in my hand. How can I speak this language? It doesn't make natural sense. We're not looking for natural sense. We're looking for supernatural sense. That's what we're operating in. And I'm telling you, if you'll get this in this day and time and this hour, when the... You, you know what's going on this, in this country right now? I mean, I, I, and, and, yeah, but God's in the middle of chaos, and he's, he, he's bringing it in. You're right. You're right. Uh, that's the word all the faith people are even using. It's, it, it's chaos and revival. But on the inauguration day, there was a pause when I believe when I saw this, and I was watching, when I saw this, I believe a bunch of people with organized plans looked around for just a moment and said, what was that? What, what's going on? I didn't expect this. And ever since then, the left and the world is looking at you and trying to figure out what's going on. And they don't have a chance to understand it because you're operating in a supernatural realm. They don't, if they're not operating in that same supernatural realm, they don't have a chance to grasp it. You realize what kind of advantage you have over the world? Man. An un, 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 unfathomable advantage to the natural mind. You got to get the substance in your heart before you see it with your natural, with the natural, and and get it in your hand. You've got to get the substance in your heart before you see it in your hand. You don't always start out with assurance and confidence, other than it's assurance and confidence to decide to live by faith. It's assurance and confidence to say. If God's word says it, that settles it. That's line, that line's right up with 100% force of faith released. 100%. You say, well, I don't, I'm not even assured yet. I'm not even confident yet. doesn't matter. If you decide, I'm going to believe I receive when I pray, then I will have it. You've made zero room for doubt. And you're in the place of faith. And the force of faith has no choice but to work in your behalf. Substance will be in your hand. Amen. I never have been able to receive physical healing. This is a, a quote from somebody else. I never have been able to f receive physical healing for myself without first believing I have it. Every symptom in my body cries out, you don't have it. Anybody ever had that happen before? This ain't working. <laughs> That's what it's saying. I simply stand firm on what God's word says about my healing and continue to claim that I'm healed. Results are then forthcoming. You get it now? That goes with what I said. It's another way of saying it. Amen. But if I were to sit around and groan, sigh, gripe, and complain, waiting until every symptom was gone and any feelings corresponded with my faith before I believed, I would never get very far. Why? Because faith is the evidence of things not seen. I've got to live with the evidence of what God's word says. And uh, Thomas' faith versus Abraham's faith is the example. So many Christians have a Thomas faith when they should have an Abraham faith. Thomas said, I will not believe until I can see him. Whereas Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God, but was strong in faith. Thomas for Thomas, seeing is believing. For Abraham, believing is seeing. Isn't that right? John 20, 24 through 29. Just write it down because I'm in a hurry. John 20, 24 through 29. Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. 
Now just pay attention to the setting here because uh, really the disciples in a sense seeing was believing for them even though Jesus uses this for a teaching moment. Okay? The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see it, uh, in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe and after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them then came Jesus the door being shut you know what that means here came Jesus but without the door opening you got it the door being shut amen and stood in the midst and said peace be unto you then said he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. How did Jesus know about all that? He wasn't present when Thomas doubted. He knew because he was in tune supernaturally. He knew in the Spirit, didn't he? Okay. Be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus took a teaching moment here, even though they all needed to hear this, really. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. You see that? You can believe before you see it. You can see it with the eye of faith. Why did Thomas find it hard to believe Jesus was alive? Because his physical senses told him Jesus was dead. He saw him die with his natural life. He saw him die with his natural life. Thomas knew of the nails that pierced Jesus' hands and spear that thrust his side. And he was using head knowledge rather than heart faith. Compare now the faith of Abraham, Romans 4, 17 through 21. Just write it down. Romans 4, 17 through 21. As it is written, I have made thee, Abraham, talking about, a father of many nations before him whom, it, whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Now, right here. Understand that the way God operates, He quickens dead things. And also, on top of that, He calls things that be not as though they were. That's what your faith does. It says it's real before it has it in its hand. That's the consistent lingo for a faith person. Amen? Verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according as it, uh, which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, let me back up just a second. Against hope, believed in hope. Many times you're going to exercise faith and release faith when it seems hopeless. But you're going to reach and grab the hope of the scripture, the hope of the promise. And against hope, you're going to believe in hope. In other words, against hopelessness, you're going to believe in hope. That's really what that should have said. According to the word, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. He's talking about it. You'll be a father of many nations. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was uh, about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now the Bible says to consider not the circumstances is to be not weak in faith. When you don't, if you consider the circumstances too much, your faith will weaken. It'll come down, way down. But the moment you decide to buy into what God said and you disregard circumstances and you, you allow this to supersede the circumstances, you're strengthening your faith every time you're doing that. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing, right? You keep hearing what the Word said. You keep refusing the circumstances. You keep not giving the circumstances a right to operate. Isn't that right? Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, neither dead as Sarah's womb. And now watch this, verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Unbelief was the idea of considering the circumstances. That would have made unbelief active. But the Bible says that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. What's that mean? It means he prayed this, he bound the devil, he released ministering spirits, and he spent all the rest of his days praising and thanking God for what was going to manifest. Thank you, God. I praise you. Your word says you supply all my need according to your riches and glory. Your word says I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. You sent your word and healed me. Yeah, but you know you're not going to be healed 
Uh, that's not what the Word says. The Word says, Psalms 107.20, He sent His Word and healed them. Uh, he went about doing good and healed all that were oppressed of the devil. All includes me. Now you see how I'm not allowing myself to be weak in faith. I'm only being strong in faith, giving glory to God. What do you do with all that idle time while you're waiting for it to show up in your hand? You're giving glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. You're, you're spending your time bringing thoughts captive that are lying because everybody deals with a different realm of thought life. Everybody's got the same realm, but everybody deals with different things. Well, you know you was born on the wrong side of the track. You better get in the book right now. You say, do I have time for all that? Yeah, that's your life. That's your life. Doing that's your life. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. See, unbelief would come in the moment you start allowing all that stuff to bombard you and you don't deal with it. Now, just because that stuff started bombarding your mind does not, believe, does not mean unbelief took over. Because you can doubt in your head not doubt in your heart. All this stuff I'm telling you to do is bringing your heart in line. It's putting your heart out there with faith. It's making faith alive and making it work. Amen? And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. What gets you to the place of being fully persuaded? That what God promised, he's able to perform. The process I'm telling you about right here. Casting down imaginations. Bringing thoughts captive. Continuing to give glory to God. Amen? It's the way of faith. Amen? Notice the difference in Thomas and Abraham's faith. Thomas had only a natural human faith. He said, I'm not going to believe unless I see and feel. Abraham, however, believed God's word. He did not consider his own body, his own body, his own natural senses. If Abraham did, didn't consider physical knowledge or feelings, what did he consider? He considered the word of God. He considered the word of God. Thank you for tuning in today on the River Church program. We hope you can join us soon in one of our services. The River Church meets every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We are located at 6716 Central Avenue Pike at Callahan Drive in Knoxville, Tennessee. On behalf of Pastor Dale Berry and the River Church, I'm Chad Coffin. i